All right, this case is another meniscally focused case. It's an adult man with a work-related injury. Um, Lord knows what he was doing. But often underutilized is the axial projection. And when you scroll thin section axials, less than two millimeters, you can pick up a lot of information. For instance, you can see a problem with the bone on the lateral side, which correlates with this fracture or osteochondral fracture on the lateral side. You also see distension of the posterolateral meniscal capsule reflection by fluid. So that already tells you that you probably have had some type of pivot shift related insult. And then when you go over to the medial meniscus side, to the root, the, the area of the root attachment, which is right here, is interrupted vertically from anterior to posterior by this high signal area, which represents a radial injury, and a fairly large radial injury at that. So you can get a depth of that radial injury. You can get a width, which is a little more narrow here, but widens as it goes in. And now it's time to look at the meniscus in another projection, even though there's lots more information about what's happening with the ligaments in the axial projection, but that's a story for another day. So now let's look at the coronal since it's up. And we have extensive bone marrow edema, which tells us posteriorly in the tibia that we've had a pivot shift. We also have the typical terminal sulcus injury, again, supporting the mechanism of injury of a pivot shift, which we will go over that mechanism when we focus on ligaments. But you should be dialed into the small character of the medial meniscus. It's got a little vertical signal in it, which is part of our tear. And let's follow our tear around. We can follow it into the posterior horn body junction region. So there is a vertical component. There's a horizontal or an oblique component. So there's some complexity to this tear, but I'm primarily showing it for this. The radial gap that you saw in the axial projection. Let's go back to it. Here it is right here. Oft overlooked, but never understated. And it's got some width to it. Obviously that width changes from anterior to posterior. So it'll change as you scroll from front to back. And it is just medial to the root attachment. There is the root ligament attachment arcing down next to a small bundle of the PCL that courses along the inner wall of the femoral condyle. It's intact, but it is the meniscus immediately adjacent to the meniscotibial attachment that is torn. So functionally, you've lost your tether there, and that's going to allow over time with hoop stresses, the meniscus to start to migrate out. It has not done so yet. Let's look at the sagittal projection. We'll reaffirm our anterior cruciate ligament tear, although that's not why we're here. There is our fairly large tear. And here is our meniscus tear, which we said was rather complex. It had an oblique or horizontal component, and then it continues on with a little tiny vertical component, which is so common in these pivot shifts. This signal will be there forever. It is going to sit directly atop the meniscal contusion. So you don't want to get too excited about these when you see them a year or two later. But I also wanted to show you the meniscal ghost. Here we are, right through our radial tear. The meniscus is there. It's gone. It's back again. So you're missing that chopped segment right there. And meniscal ghosting, or loss of meniscal signal, can be seen with congenital absence of the meniscus, which is much more common laterally, although still a rare phenomenon. You can see it with autodigestion from rheumatoid arthritis. Get a big bucket handle tear that separates the meniscus into two pieces. You will lose the meniscus. A giant radial tear, you'll lose the meniscus. And even infiltrative processes like CPPD and gout may completely wipe out and obliterate the meniscus. So let's move on to another meniscal case.